Okay, so a lot of people are going to do this problem wrong because they don't understand basic math as well as they think. Now, let's see how you do with this problem. The only rule here is no calculators. And the problem is 2 to the 4th minus 8 divided by 3 cubed times 18 divided by 2. What is this all equal to? Well, if you can do this, again, no calculators. Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through exactly how to do this problem. And I'm going to highlight one of the most common mistakes students and people make when it comes to basic math. All right, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so hopefully you had a, uh, a chance to do this, okay? Don't be afraid of this. Even if you get this wrong, uh, you know you're going to learn something, so you should always uh, try to do this problem. Now, if you don't know how to uh, you know, evaluate a power, no big deal, I'm gonna teach you everything here, but let's go ahead and take a look at the right answer. The correct answer is eight thirds. All right, now, how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional, certified expert in the area of order of operations. And that's what this problem kind of primarily is about because this is where students are going to make, well, uh, most mistakes are gonna be made because people don't understand the order of operations. Now, what is a mathematical operation? Well, a mathematical operator is things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We need to know the right order to uh, do problems when there, or uh, do math problems when there's multiple operations involved, right? So here, this is division, we have multiplication, we have division here, we have subtraction here, and then we even have powers going on, like what is the correct order to do all this stuff? Well, this is what we really have to understand. And a lot of students and people have a, a basic understanding of this, but not the precise understanding. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about in a second. So if you didn't get the right answer, actually, I think that's a good thing because uh, you're going to find out probably precisely where you may have uh, some confusion about basic math. And this is not going to be that difficult of stuff, but extremely important. So let's get into it right now. All right. Now, here is our problem. And uh, we need to, again, understand the correct order of operations. So uh, we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We have to know what is the correct order to do these things. But not only that, we also have powers uh, going on here. So things like this two to the fourth. So what is the correct order? Well, luckily we have this lovely saying in mathematics called PEMDAS, right? And this is simply an acronym, okay? It's a checklist uh, These uh, these letters stand for something. And more or less, most people uh, are familiar with this. There's a little phrase that goes along with this. We can learn this in school. It is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay, now what does this mean? Well, again, this is our checklist. This is going to basically tell us the correct order of operations. And I think most people are familiar with that. Like, yes, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I understand that. And this is how people understand this checklist, okay? You're gonna start over here, you're gonna start with this P and you're gonna move uh, over to the right. So it's from left to right. And again, I'm gonna fully explain this, but I'm just kind of uh, leaving things somewhat general here because I want, uh, you know, I wanna see how well you actually understand this. But let's just at least tell you what these uh, letters stand for because this is an acronym. So this P here stands for parentheses. So you can see here we have parentheses. It actually stands for grouping symbols. So parentheses like this or brackets like this or these type of brackets. E stands for exponents, but really you can kind of think of this as powers. This little number up here is the exponent part of the power. This is called the base. This entire thing is a power. So two to the third power, the three is an exponent. So that E stands for really kind of power. M uh, stands for multiplication, D is division, A is addition, and S is subtraction. 
Okay, so hopefully you're pretty familiar with this, and if you kind of forgot this, maybe you've been away from school for many years, you might like, yes, yes, I remember this. Well, if you remember this and you forgot it and you didn't try this problem, well, go ahead and apply this to this problem. But let's go ahead and take the first step, which, of course, is to handle the parentheses, right? So you can see we have some parentheses here, some parentheses here, and some parentheses here. So we have to uh, do the uh, work that is inside of the parentheses. That's what this PEMDAS uh, kind of stands for, right? So it's like, all right, go to any parentheses that are in the problem and simplify all the math uh, that's in uh, those respective parentheses. So if you have more than one set of parentheses, basically these are like three little separate math problems. We have to uh, kind of simplify all this before we move on. Now, inside of the problems themselves, okay, we have to think of PEMDAS again, all right? So it's like, all right, so let's look inside this parenthesis. Are there any more parentheses? Because you certainly could have other parentheses and parentheses in math. It's not uncommon. You could have something like uh, uh, two minus uh, eight times three parentheses and parentheses. So that PEMDAS is a checklist you always apply constantly. So I'm looking inside here. I don't see any parentheses, so I'm good with this. Do I see any uh, powers? Yes, indeed. So I have a power here. I also have a power here. I don't have any powers uh, powers in this uh, set of parentheses. So let's just go ahead and start simplifying uh, these um, three sets of parentheses one at a time. And we'll start over here to the left by two to the fourth. Okay, so two to the fourth, what does this mean? Well, if you're not familiar with powers, two to the fourth power means take this big number and multiply it by its, uh, itself this many times. So two to the fourth power says take two and multiply it by itself four times. So two times two times two times two. Two times two is uh, four. So uh, we have two times two, which again is four. And then we have another four here, two times two. So all of this is going to be 16. Okay, so hopefully you knew that, but maybe you forgot, no big deal. So we have 16 minus eight. Now I'll, I'll clean this up here in a second, but remember we are following PEMDAS, right? And we're gonna have to apply PEMDAS to each set of these parentheses. So in here, there were no parentheses, but I did have some power. So we're just gonna take this thing one step at a time. All right, let's go over here with this three cubed and simplify that. So three cubed means what? Well, it, takes, it, it means take three and multiply it by itself three times, which of course three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. And then here I have 18 divided by two, which hopefully all of you know is going to be nine. Okay, so uh, so far so good. I think uh, most uh, people probably got up to this point. Now, if you didn't, no big deal. You can kind of judge for yourself where you may need to improve or what you might need to learn in math. So here, let's go ahead and clean up this set of parentheses right here. So we're not quite done. We're done with these parentheses, but here we have to finish up. So 16 minus eight is obviously going to be eight. All right, so here is our problem. We have eight divided by 27 uh, times nine. Now again, no calculators. So we need to be thinking about PEMDAS and of course, I kind of gave you a quick summary on what to do. So let's see what you do. Of course, I'm going to show you the next step, which of course is having you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need your support to continue to build content like this. It is my passion to reach as many people as I possibly can that could benefit from my math instruction. Okay. And all you need to do, it's just so, so easy is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, might as well get, uh, uh, my latest videos by getting uh, by clicking that notification button. If you're not, if you're new to my channel, I have well over 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. Okay, so let's get back to this problem now. So here is our PEMDAS, and uh, if you got to this point and you didn't get the right answer, well, I'm so happy you're watching this video because you're probably saying to yourself. All right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, I know you made a mistake uh, because let's just look at our checklist. We did all the parentheses. Yes, indeed. Uh, we did all the powers. Yes, uh, we did. And now we should be moving on to multiplication, right? Because it's a checklist from left to right. Well, unfortunately, this is wrong. Okay, wrong, wrong, wrong. To interpret uh, uh, PEMDAS or how to use the order of operation or how to uh, basically uh, read this PEMDAS, this checklist. Okay, now hopefully 
that wasn't too confusing. So you might be saying, what are you talking about? All right, so I'm gonna explain this right now. All right, so uh, the parentheses part, okay, you always do parentheses first, okay? So what I just kind of explained previously is correct. Now, inside of every set of parentheses, you wanna look for powers first or exponents, so that's not a problem. Here is where uh, a lot of confusion comes into, okay? And come to play, it comes into play for uh, students. And I don't think this is really uh, uh, stressed well enough in a lot of math textbooks or math courses. So if you're confused about this, well, you know what? Don't be so hard on yourself. But here is the deal, okay? It's not just multiplication next, always, 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 because if that was the case, we would do this, and that is wrong, okay? So if we did this next, all right, this is multiplication, this is division, this is wrong. But why? Well, because this M and D is actually a group. We're going to do multiplication or division, whatever we see first from left to right. Okay, so what do we see uh, first from left to right? So do we have multiplication division? Yes, we actually have both. So what do we see first from left to right? We see division first. So we have to do this first, and then we'll move on to multiplication. If I have multiplication here, I would do multiplication first because that's what I see from left to right, and addition and subtraction work the same way. Now, uh, sometimes uh, people reach out to me and be like, hey, that's wrong. Uh, PEMDAS, that's a, you know, this is not true. Uh, I'm telling you right now, 99.999% uh, of uh, math teachers and math courses, matter of fact, punch all these numbers in this particular problem into your calculator. Your calculator is following this set of, you know, this uh, order of operations and it's interpreted this way. So maybe there are some people out there that just don't believe in a, a PEMDAS, but if you don't follow PEMDAS the way I'm describing it to you, you will not uh, do well on your math exams if you are a math student. All right, so I'm just telling you right now, this is the way it works. All right, so with that being said, what do we have to do? Well, we have to do multiplication and again, a lot of people probably, I'm sorry, not multiplication, see, I did that wrong. We have to do division first, right? And a lot of people probably did this wrong because they strictly interpret this checklist um, as uh, left to right. Okay, so now that I got that uh, clear, let's go ahead and actually finish up the problem because we do have a, a little bit of work to do, even if you understand a division, because we're going to be dealing with fractions. Now, fractions, basic math, and if you forget, um, if you forgot, if you forgot, excuse me, how to work with fractions, I'll give you a couple quick suggestions on uh, how to uh, relearn uh, fractions quickly. But uh, here we go. We have eight divided by twenty-seven. So what is eight divided by twenty-seven? Well, the best way to express that is as a fraction. This is eight divided by twenty-seven. So let's just write that as a fraction times nine. Okay. So eight divided, uh, eight divided by twenty-seven times nine. We need to know how to multiply fractions. So eight uh, divided by 27 times nine or nine over one. Okay, so I'm writing nine as a fraction. You can write any number as a fraction by just simply putting it over one. So here we have a numerator and denominator. And the way we multiply fractions, it's very easy. All we have to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. Now, I'm not gonna multiply eight times nine and then divide it by 27. What I'm going to do is kind of simplify this, and I'm going to take this 9 and divide it into this 27. But really, that's not what I'm doing. Okay, now I could multiply 8 times 9 and then uh, put that over 27, but uh, over 27, but I'm going to have to reduce that fraction. So 27 is the same thing as 9 times 3, right? So if you want to think of this problem, let me actually erase this. There is a 27 there but this is nine times three, that's our 27. Now, uh, when we are multiplying fractions, okay, you can actually cross cancel like factors. I'm gonna just put this uh, over one big fraction like this, okay, because when we multiply fractions, we multiply respective numerators and denominators. So here's our situation, and you wanna work smart. Okay, remember, we're not using a calculator here. So uh, if you have the same factor in the numerator and the same, uh, the factor in the denominator, okay, you can just ca uh, cross cancel one for one and whatever is left is the answer. So you can see that is eight thirds. All right, so you need to fully simplify uh, your fractions, but this is it. This is, you know, 
uh, this, you know, uh, doing this problem without a calculator. If you know what you do when it comes to basic math, you could do this without too much difficulty. Now, a lot of you might be like, wow, boy, I forgot a lot of this stuff. Or maybe you're struggling with basic math. Uh, you know what? That is perfectly fine because you know your starting point. Okay, that doesn't mean that's your ending point. So let me give you a couple quick suggestions. Uh, one, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel about all these basic math concepts and little quick tutorials on how to kind of come up to speed on fractions. But I think a lot of you might want to uh, kind of you know really dive uh, dive uh, uh, deeper into relearning all the math that you forgot, okay? Especially basic math, there is a lot of stuff there that, uh, you know, is, you know, like practical math that you forgot, you know, like how to work with decimals, percent, fractions, etc. So let me give you a couple quick suggestions if you want to take it a step further. One, I have a great little mini course. It's called my Math Foundations course. It's only three chapters, self-paced, but I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about basic mathematics, place value, decimal, percent, uh, fractions, uh, you know, just how to even multiply, divide numbers by hand. So that's a great little course for you. Now, if you want to take it a step further and kind of recapture a lot of your math skills that maybe you forgot, maybe you've, uh, you know, been away from school for many years, or maybe you just kind of need to, uh, you know, uh, learn math to get back into a, a new career or whatnot, or you need math, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. So in here, I teach you all that foundational math, but and I also teach you a ton of algebra, geometry, some trigonometry, and even some probability and statistics. So you'll find links to both of, of those courses in the description, but hopefully this little video helps you out. And if you got something uh, wrong here, Okay, you know, it's good. It's totally fine to make errors in anything you do. You know, we're only human, right? The key thing is we want to try to learn from our, uh, our misunderstandings and our mistakes. And hopefully uh, some of you out there learn something. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.